So, last week we finished up with question 90, and this week we start with 91, but we, in speaking of question number 90, we were talking about the word, which is the first, according to question 88, what are the outward and ordinary, right? Means whereby Christ communicated to us the benefits of redemption. And we said that these are called another name for these outward means or is what? Word, sacraments, and prayer, all which are made effectual to the elect for salvation. They're called the what? The means of grace. So, in dealing with the word that was the first on the list, the outward and ordinary means whereby Christ communicated to us the benefit of redemption are his ordinance, especially the word sacraments and prayer, all which are made effectual to the elect for salvation. And then we dealt with uh, how was the word made effectual to salvation. Notice the uh, mediate nature. See? The Spirit of God make it the reading, but especially the preaching of the Word an effectual means of convincing. Notice, this is talking about salvation. Right? Convincing and converting sinners and of building them up in holiness and comfort through faith unto salvation. So, in other words, the word is made effectual through what? Holding. The word is made effectual through the Holy Spirit. Through the Spirit. The word by itself, First Corinthians, uh, what is it, 6, 9? 2 Corinthians, uh, let's try to find that. Um, I think it's 2 Corinthians where it says, Now we have received Second uh, Corinthians three six. I was thinking it was six. Three six. who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. So, meaning what, Kenneth? The letter of the law uh, condemns us. Exactly. So, uh, well, that takes us to... uh, Romans 3, 19 and 20. What's that, Romans? That's one of our verses, right? Where's Romans? Romans 3, 19 and 20. Whatsoever things in the law say, the say to them that under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. And then it says what? Therefore, by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin. In other words, the law was never given in order to save. It was given what? Can it? The first use of the law, remember that, Hunter? The first use of the law is what? Exactly. The uh, first use of the law is the knowledge of sin. And so, the letter cannot give life. It is the Spirit accompanied by the Word. And then uh, it says, how is the Word be read and heard? That's question number 90 that it may become effectual to salvation. And what's that, Calvin? That the word... 
the salvation, we must attend thereunto with diligent preparation and prayer, so you with faith and love may open our hearts and practice it in our lives. Okay. So, and that's the word. Now, to, today we start with question 91, which is, how do the sacraments become? That's the second means of grace. The word, sacraments, and prayer. How do the sacraments become effectual means of salvation? All day. The sacraments become effectual means of salvation, not the many virtue in them, nor in him that, that the minister of them, but only by the blessing of Christ and the working of the Spirit and then that our faith receive. Hey, so, so here's the first question. Are the sacraments... Are the sacraments effectual means of salvation? Hey, Leachy. Let's say. Hmm. Are, the sacral, are the sacraments effectual means of salvation? And what's the answer? How? Should we know? Yes. A, they become. Yeah, right. So they become right. effectual. Right. Which they are. They but but effectual. that's the first question. Mm-hmm. That, and that is, they are effectual means of salvation... But what? Look at what Thomas Vincent says. I was reading through this. Uh, How negatively are the sacraments not effectual means of salvation? He says the sacraments negatively are not effectual means of salvation by any virtue in them, in themselves, to convert for grace and salvation upon all the receivers and by the work done or bear receiving of them. For many may and do partake of the sacraments who are without true grace and have no share in the salvation of the gospel. That's pretty good. I like that, huh? So, what's he saying? Kenneth. How they are not effectual means of salvation. First of all, they're not effectual means of salvation in and of themselves exactly and that you see that is we we can never forget the context in which this thing was written this document and the context was what Mormonism no context was Roman Catholicism so and there's a term in Roman Catholicism is ex opere operato what does ex opere operato mean Out of the work, it work is, is work, right. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Or in ordinary English parlance, we say, in and of themselves. See that? So we were just talking earlier in our conversation about um, the, the concept of, we, we won't go into it, but the concept of immediate regeneration which has a tendency to elevate the church. And the, the, the idea that you can only be saved through the preaching of an ordained minister in, in the church, which is where it's not scriptural, I don't, I don't believe. But anyway, uh, how does that relate to this? Well, you're elevating the church to a level, of, and that's what the Roman Catholics did, because they said that the sacrament works in and of itself. Meaning... uh, It gives them a power and an authority apart from Christ. It would be akin to an automobile turning itself on and going somewhere. Yeah. So it makes... It makes... And this is... There's a method to the madness, right? Mm Mm-hmm. That, 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 they didn't just come up that, with that by accident. They said that the sacraments works, work, or the sacrament works because you don't drink the wine, right? In the Roman Catholic Church, you oh, only take it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if lately they actually. I had. I yeah. had oh, they? sipped the wine. Yeah. Oh, both. Okay. I think it may. That may be. But an whatever. Order. Even if yeah. it's one or two, that they work in and of themselves, which. Indicates what are they trying to teach you by that? That they have the power to save you. There you go. The keys to the kingdom. Right. That 
you're dependent on them for salvation. But the Protestant idea, which is we believe is a scriptural idea, is that they... What's the answer to the question? They're not effectual. The sacraments become effectual means of something. Become. Mm-hmm. Not from any virtue in them or in him that... Does, there it is again. Mm-hmm. So it was both ex opere operato insofar as it is the Roman priest that is performing the ceremony, right? And it's not going to be ex opere operato if you do it. <laughs> uh, not from any... Vir- no wiggle room, see that? Any virtue in them or in him that doth administer them, but only by the blessing of Christ and the working of His Spirit in them that by faith receive them. See that? And see, there's some other wiggle room he's getting out of it. And what is that? Where he says, only by the blessing of Christ and the working of His Spirit in them. Does he say, in them that partake of the Lord's Supper? No. What else does he add? Elizabeth, you see that? Right. Why is that important? Because it's not by work. Well, what did we, uh, we what did we say were the three conditions by which an act is considered a righteous act? Remember, Randy, you remember that? It's got to be. The three conditions by which an act is considered a righteous act, a good work, is number one, it has to be commanded. Right? Remember that? Number two was uh, done in faith. Number three, done with a view to the glory of God. But what we're concentrating on here is the second condition. And which is really interesting because, in essence, what it's saying is um, it has to be commanded, and faith means it has to be done because it's commanded. You can't back into it. So the mind is involved. And, and so what it means by faith here is what? You see where we're getting at, Kenneth? Well, that it applies only to the elect. Only to the uh, regenerate, specifically. Is that what you're getting at? Or? Well, that's that's definitely part of it. it. It applies only to... Where where was that part of the answer? It says... Uh, well, Only the, by the blessing of the working of the Spirit. In them, in them by faith. Right. In them. Of course, we know that the reprobate have no faith. Correct. But even given the fact that the partakers are, are Christians, it says in them that... By faith, receive them. So is it possible for a Christian to receive the sacrament not by faith? Yes. But uh, but what we're getting at now is um, the importance of that statement in them that by faith receive them. In, take, in receiving the sacraments, we believe that this is God's means of grace. Right? Can you receive God's benefit apart from that? Before, before, no. Because you're not taking them in faith. Otherwise you're just, what do we say? Perfunc- perfunctory religious practice. And whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Perfunctory religious practice. Well, that's what we do. We, uh, we go to Mass or we go to church and um, go through the motions. No. Them that by faith receive them. And that's, can I kind of say that? That's not to say that people uh, who go to church are necessarily going by habit. Those are others. Mm-hmm. There are those that go by habit, but then there are those who go by uh, some, just like the Roman Catholics, you know. Uh, there are Roman Catholics who don't go to church by habit. They really believe what they believe. Right, so they're actively involved in... Uh Their religion, their false religion. So that's the way Muslims are. 
Okay. Only by the blessing of Christ. And what did Christ say? And that was another big controversy in the church in the 1500s where Luther said what? S. Corpus Man. S. Corpus. What was the first word? Hop? Hop. Hop. S. S. Corpus. Or Corpus S. Uh, Corpus Mayum Est. Hop. Hop. Corpus Mayum Est. This is my body. And he's pounding his fist on the table. And the, and the harder he pounded... <laughs> well, his pounding his fist didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, you can pound your fist all day long, Luther, but it doesn't change the fact that... Uh, so you've got transubstantiation, you've got consubstantiation, and you have... And you have the biblical view. <laughs> You've got the biblical view, which is what? Well, we're going to get into that in a second. But Luther's position was what? Roman Catholic. Well, no. I only no. know. I only know. It was consubstantiation. I only know what I've been taught secondhand by the uh, Calvinists, as far as what he believed, which okay. I'm inclined to take with a grain of salt. Because but Kenneth is a dyed in the wool. He's a real Luther and. <laughs> he's not a Luther and he's a Luther and. I won't believe it about Luther till I read him say it. And Luther was well. The thing we should be so amazed at is not that Luther made mistakes as we all do, but how far he he came out of that cesspool right. of Roman Catholicism. But anyway, consubstantiation is the idea that that Christ is. Physically present gotcha. under the signs. That's mysticism. Yeah. Uh, Man, I just no, transubstant. No, you can't. Not yet. Look, look, look. You come while we wait. But we, we wait. But uh, so transubstantiation is what? Maureen, what does that mean? Oh, that the, the sacraments become the actual body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Yeah, I forget the word. See, that's because it took 30,000 guys. They had the special <laughs> words for the, that, the, the idea that they are um, the, the, uh, the properties. There's some, there's some adjective. That, there's something properties the, of the... Accidents. Yeah, right. The accidents. Uh, that's a good word, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good word. The accidents... Or the accidental properties of the bread and the wine uh, it, it, it are there. Or, or they, the, the bread and the wine actually become the, the body and blood of Christ, notwithstanding the fact that the accidents in the bread and wine are still there. Meaning what? Elizabeth, you got that? The accidents... In the bread and wine are still there. Meaning what? What do they mean by that? I mean these guys were these guys were dummies. They were smart. Mm-hmm. Meaning what? What's the first? Okay. What's one of the first questions by a, a person who has not become totally mindless uh, sycophant of Roman Catholicism? What's his, one of his first questions when they teach that transubstantiation? What's he going to say? Okay. Well, how could this be the body and blood of Christ when it still tastes like wine and bread? The accidentals. Yeah. How could it still taste like wine if it's the body and blood of Christ? Well, they say that the accidentals are meant, notwithstanding, <laughs> it does become the body and blood of Christ, notwithstanding the fact that the accidentals are still present. Yeah. And you, if you got the big gulp, you got the big gulp on that one, didn't you? You got the, you got, not only did you get you, you got the sandwich, but you got to hook in the sandwich. It's amazing that the body hasn't run out. Right. So the whole thing is, a, it's, it's, it's a pipe dream. Yeah. But, and then consubstantiation is the physical, see, so what we're discovering is that it's 100% Transubstantiation is 100%. There's the test again, one of our tests. It's carnal. It's carnality. It's human idea. Because, because it is a... Sp- and we're going to get that. We're going to get to that in a second. Uh, or we get... Did we, what do you, we already got to that. The word sacraments... 
wasn't here. Uh, the Lord's Supper. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. But um, the the fact that okay, so so let's just say for the sake of argument, let's say all right. So the bread and the wine do become the body of Christ, and we partake of Christ's physical body. And so and so, what's our a spiritual response? Is what? So what? Right. I mean, suppose we did actually eat the physical body of Christ. How would that help you? Well, it would help you to... Huh? It would help you to fill in the blank. Huh? Drive your car faster? More, more nimbly? Uh, and so, once again, it's carnality. As opposed to what we're talking about today. Yeah, as, as opposed to what? Spirituality. Spirituality. And so we believe that well, we're going to get to that. Well, I think that's the next one or one of the next ones. Wow. Um, how the sacraments become effectual means not in from any virtue in them or in him that doth administer them, but only by the blessing of Christ mm -hmm. and the working of his spirit in them that by faith receive them. Now, what is a sacrament? What is a sacrament? Armin. Sacrament is a holy Sealed and and applied. Sacrament is a holy ordinance instituted by Christ, wherein by sensible signs. So, though we deny the idea that the sacraments are physically transformed into the body and blood of Christ, we do believe that. The sacraments are sensible signs. What does that mean? All they sensible signs meaning what? Being perceived by either one or more of your five senses. Right. So you can see the sacraments. You can feel. You can. They're all there, aren't they? Face. Face uh, what is it? Five senses or what? Not see. Here. Touch. Oh, you, you, you can. Yeah, you can hear it too, right? What do you mean? Chewing you it? never heard those cups fall on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard them when people snapped them after they were done. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, right? <laughs> and so, by sensible signs, Christ... And so, and, and so what's the importance of that? It, re it really is important. It, in, it, takes in the whole of the human, it takes the whole person. Yeah. Well, well, Christ is condescending to us. I like that. In other words... He's giving us spiritual benefit. He's teaching us spiritually through a physical medium. As, I mean, it, it, when you think about it, well, meditate that's, on that's, this. That's uh, what Jesus that. said to Nicodemus. You must be born again. What is, and what was the first thing he understood? What the Roman Catholics understand. How can a man go back into his mom's uh, womb and be born again? Yeah. This is what they do. They so, actually think like Nicodemus before he understood truth. By sensible signs, Christ and the benefits of the new covenant are represented, sealed, and applied to believers. Okay, so. Um, representation. Okay, Christ is represented. How so? Kenneth. Uh, does it mean... Presented again. Well, I would. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not doubting them, but I think the main idea is that, um, that, that. Well, the body. God. Christ gave His physical body and blood for our redemption. Mm -hmm. That's a representation of the fact of the cross of what happened, what took place on the cross, and it's a physical representation that. Christ is represented by the elements. I mean, they're not just some... Uh, you know, so it's no accident that they use wine. right? And they use a certain color of wine. And bread. So, represented, sealed. Okay, but, but notice the, the, the whole sentence. It, it doesn't say repre just represented as a... Not wearing by sensible signs. Christ... And the benefits of the covenant is 
are represented, seal and applied, to believers. Now, represented, Christ is represented to believers. Sealed. Christ is sealed to believers. Meaning what? All right. Right. Can be taken away. And a seal is a sign of, of possession. Right. Ownership. Ownership. And so when we partake of the, of the uh, elements, we believe that God is saying to us, you, you are mine. Yep. No. They're not given to, and that's why, and that's why we have uh, whosoever uh, partaketh unworthily. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Why? Because you're not his. Wow. So, represented, sealed, and applied to believers. So, there we got the represented Christ's body and blood are represented in the elements. The elements are a seal, a sign of ownership. And what else, Maureen? What's the third one he says? Applied. Okay. And apply it to believers, meaning what? Once again, we're speaking of when we're speaking of uh, the word sacraments in prayer. We're speaking of what? Means, means of, grace. of grace. And so this is a means of grace because the word applied meaning what? I'm not sure what you're asking here. Well, I'm a, I'm asking that it says Christ and the benefits of the new covenant are. Applied to believers. So we actually, far from going through the motion, perfunctory religious practice, we believe that what? Actually, See, and what is it? So let's contrast this with the Baptist too. The Baptist view is wrong too. What is the Baptist? Remember Randy, what we they used to say, what did the Baptist say about the about the uh, Lord's Supper? Remember? The, what did the Baptists say about the Lord's Supper? What was what's their view of the Lord's Supper? That it's a, a yeah, it's 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 a, a I forget the I'm tr- trying to think of the word what? Yeah, it's outward expression and image. Uh, but the, uh, it's symbolic. That's the word. Mere. And then uh, I remember my systematic theology teacher says, "Oh no." Symbol, you can't say it's a mere symbol. Oh, yes, I can. Because what did they deny? He said the exact same thing. What did they deny? By using the word mere, he opposed, he, he voiced opposition to the word mere, but the word, the word mere in Baptist understanding of the, of the sacraments belongs because they believe that it is symbolic alone as opposed to, <laughs> As opposed to effectual. effectual. Okay. Didn't you hear the word? Mm-hmm. Not for uh, uh, sacraments become effectual means. Mm-hmm. Meaning what? What does the word effectual mean? Effectual. August. What does the word effectual mean? Remember that. Yeah, bringing about the desired result. There's a word. So, but the Baptists don't believe that. No way. Uh uh-uh. uh They don't believe it. And you, a, a Baptist who knows his Baptist theology, he will take offense when you say that the sacraments, what will they say immediately? That's a word. That's a word of God. The word of God is a, this is the means of grace also. Otherwise, what's the purpose of it, right? What's the purpose? If God doesn't bless his people in the partaking of the sacraments, was this busy work? Yeah. So, in them that by faith uh, represented, what did I just say? We're on the set, uh, on 92. I'm, I'm getting confused here. Uh, uh, represented, sealed, and applied to what? Believe. Applied to believers. There you have it again, right? So, that word faith is important in the, both of these questions. Them that by faith receive them, represented, sealed, and applied to believers. So then we could ask the question, which we frequently ask and, and, and just almost as frequently get no answer to. And that's the question, 
What does a believer believe that makes him a believer? Huh? Hey, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> what, is a what would you say, Kenneth? What does a believer believe that makes him a believer? Well, you could say grace as opposed to works. Yeah. Well, the answer the basis, well, the gospel. The gospel. Is the answer, but. But these he believes days, that, right? Well, what, what's the most important religion? So, how so how is a man become an empty word? How can a man be just with God? To which question the gospel is the only answer. Mm. He believes the gospel. Well, that only raises another question. What? What's the gospel? It, right. So you, all these things have to be defined, like we said today. Impetration has got to be defined. And 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 the uh, the what were we talking about? The uh, moral influence theory of the atonement. What does it say? As soon as you hear that explained, you realize if you if you are in my background, that's exactly what we believed. Because there is no justice in an Arminian view of of the atonement. No, it removes justice because it says Christ dies for people who end up in hell. So God cannot be just. So what you're left with is the moral influence theory of the atonement. Okay, next question. Which are the sacraments of the New Testament? All day. The sacraments of the New Testament are baptism and the Lord's Supper. Baptism and the Lord's Supper. So, um, now, why this question? Can it? Why this question? Well... Uh, again, keeping in mind the context, when this was written, the Roman Catholic Church had, I believe, seven sacraments. Right. Marriage, um, uh, the yeah, last, please, what is they called? Last rites? Right? Right? Oh, 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 uh, the, uh, yeah, oh, what I think it's a different uh, name for, right? The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. extreme unction, yeah, right. and the, uh, is that when, when you die? Yeah. yeah. Extreme unction. Right. Yeah. 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 Last rites. But they had, uh, they had like, I like Kenneth says, I think about seven of them. Okay. But, According to Scripture, you have baptism and the Lord's Supper. And we're going to get into those next time. But uh, let's, let's consider a couple more things by uh, Vincent. We talked about, he said, how negatively are the sacraments not effectual means of salvation. And what do we say? Kelly, remember? The sacraments are or become effectual means of salvation, but they are not effectual what? Remember what we said? Remember ex opere operato meaning what? In and of themselves. They don't work in and of themselves. That would mean what? If they worked in and of themselves, what would that communicate? Anybody could perform it. For yeah, anybody. as long as it's you take the right, the priest gives you the it's bread and wine, it's a magic and spell. you eat it. Yeah, and you, uh, abracadabra, right. yeah. you receive benefit. Focus, focus. And there's a yeah, there's a method to the madness. That means you got to come there to get their great. John MacArthur's a priest because his radio program is called <laughs> Grace to You. <laughs> so right? I, What's the difference? Here are the seven holy sacraments: <laughs> baptism, confirmation, Eucharist. Reconciliation or penance, anointing of the sick. Okay, he's given us the seven deadly sins. The oh, seven. Yes. <laughs> no, no, the seven <laughs> holy sacraments of the Catholic Church. Yeah. Anointing seven of the sacraments. sacraments. Marriage or matrimony, and one is holy orders. That becoming a priest. Right. Probably right. So that you, powers. so that you can work ex opere operato. All right. Now, positively. How positively are the sacraments effectual means of salvation? Number one, by the blessing and presence of Christ, which do accompany the sacraments and other ordinances of his own, insti of his own institution. Matthew 18, 20. Let's look at that. That should ring a bell. Matthew 18, 20. No, 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 no. Okay. Read that, Kenneth. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Mm. There you go. Gathered together in my name, 
And in my name meaning what? Course, That's my, deep. By my authority? Yeah, exactly. Because but you're not, it doesn't mean, oh, like you pray in the name of Jesus. That doesn't mean you add in Jesus' name on the end of your prayers. Right. Come on, man. You really that superficial. To gather, you gather together That's in my name in remembrance of the way, I, who I am and how I've commanded you to meet. There am I. So, where he says, uh, by the blessing and presence of Christ, which do accompany the sacraments and other ordinances of his own institution. Then Matthew 18, 19, 20. Teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And then he says, Number two, the first one was by the blessing and presence of Christ. They positively become effectual means of salvation. Christ blesses them. Secondly, by the working of the Spirit. Right, what did he say? Yes. Not from any virtue in them or in him that doth administer them, but only by the blessing of Christ and the working of the Spirit. So that's the second point. By the working of the Spirit. And then in parenthesis, uh, uh, Thomas Vincent says, the effect and evidence of Christ's blessing and presence. Wow, isn't that something? The working of a spirit. He says, the effect and E-F-F-E-C-T. The effect and evidence of Christ's blessing and presence. How do you know that Christ has blessed the sacraments? What's he saying? All thing. You mean Thomas Vincent's answer to the yeah. question? Yeah. How do you know that, that Christ has blessed the sacraments? Because he blessed them in his word. His well, but according to what he said, the effect, they have an effect. They actually the do impart a spiritual benefit to the partakers of them. And here's one way where you think, what does a baby, now an infant who's baptized, we believe, since that's the sign of the covenant, elect infants do receive spiritual benefits. But here's another way. When we are observing a baptism, we receive spiritual benefit as well in our observation of the sacrament. We're not being baptized, right? But you see that? How that you as being one of the people of God, receive spiritual benefit from, from the sacrament, even though you're not the one being baptized. How so? Kenneth, what do you think? Well, you're witnessing um, uh, the application of the sacrament. You're witnessing uh, a... Uh, well, speaking a, a specifically of baptism... We believe that baptism is what? We're going to get into that next week. A sacrament. is A sign, sign of, of the, the covenant. covenant. Right. And so when we see, especially an infant baptized, it's, it's, it should be very moving to us because we see that this is the sign of the covenant. That's the way God normally saves His people in the line of continued generations. Right? This is it. Unless, of course, it's Remember, we were going to this church, one of the last churches we were going to, this guy, this baby was, this baby was baptized, and he walks around, holding the baby, walks around the whole church, saying what this, I forget what he said, but it was. Oh, they tell them what their, your name means. Yeah, your name means a baby. (laughs) Well, isn't that maybe be gosh or something? <laughs> isn't that what John Smith did with his uh, grandson who was born? <laughs> but anyway, we see we see that the the, the the reality in before our very eyes, right? By the, the sensible signs that this baby's being baptized, and we realize that this is indeed the way that God saves His people in the line of continued generations. And so that aids our faith, right? 
That aids our sanctification because we are sanctified by the truth of what's the statement in the covenant? Genesis seven seventeen. Is that what it is, guys? Let's look at it. Genesis seventeen seven seventeen seven or seven seventeen. Seventeen seven. I knew that. <laughs> Too early in the Genesis book. 17, 7. Too early Read in that book. loud, all day. Genesis 17, 7. And I'll establish my covenant between me and you and thy seed after thee and their generations to be a God and to thee and to thy seed after thee. Yeah, isn't that a fantastic verse? I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations. For an everlasting covenant, an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed. Hey, how could it be any clearer? He could have said, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee. Period. No. In their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Come on, how could you miss that? Well, the Baptists miss it, right? Maybe they fall asleep every time we read that. Now, when he says seed there, okay, he's speaking of spiritual seed. Right. And a good question. Because let's look at uh, Romans 9, mm-hmm. where it says... 9, 6. Yeah. Oh, no, before that. But, uh, where it says... The children of the flesh. These are not the children. What verse is that? Uh, eight. Seven. Seven. Mm-hmm. The chil- verse eight. eight. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for. So, in other words, this is really interesting. These are not the children of God. In a certain sense, Jacob wasn't even a children, a, a child of God. In what sense? In so far as he was the physical son of Abraham. There it is. No. He was not the children, a child of God, but in so far as he was a child of the promise. And remember, he said, for this is the word of I mean, in that chapter, Romans 9, I think a lot of times we miss a lot of other things in Romans 9 because we're focusing on one thing so much, predestination. But this is phenomenal here. Uh, for this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a seed. That's the promise. Yeah. And that's, that was not only to, to Sarah. That's every single person in the covenant. See? At this time, whatever time God decides, at this time I will come. That's it. So it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. That's verse 16 of the same chapter. But of God that showeth mercy. And then verse 18. Therefore, there you go again. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. Therefore, sometimes he comes and other times he doesn't. At this time, his time of warning, will I come. And you'll be born again if he comes. And if he doesn't, you won't be. Therefore, hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. And what? Whom he will. The same word of promise hardens the reprobate as well as softens the elect. The same sun that uh, melts butter hardens clay. So, how do we get into that? I forget. Whatever but that was the second was the spirit uh, whereby the Christ uh, working of the spirit the effect and evidence right of Christ's blessing and presence whereby Christ doth put life and virtue and efficacy into his sacraments and ordinances without which <laughs> they would be wholly dead and altogether ineffectual you think these guys try to make things clear and we still cloud them up, right? Listen to that sentence. Without which they would be wholly dead and altogether ineffectual. Yeah. And then the last one, uh, 
Question, in whom doth the Spirit by the sacraments work effectually unto salvation? And what does he say? The Spirit by the sacraments doth not work effectually unto salvation of all that receive them, but of all that by faith receive them. And what's he getting at? Once again, Paul Dane, what's he getting at? Oh, I wouldn't miss. Hey, we're going to have the Lord's Supper today. I kind of miss. Can't miss that. Because I've got I to gotta go through the motions. No. What does he say? All in. The sacraments are useless without Christ's blessing and the working of the Spirit. And all that by faith receive them. We believe that God is going to bless us through the sacrament. Okay? Any questions? Okay, what? About if any man lack faith, can you explain that verse to me? If any man lack faith, let him ask of God. Yes. That's James 1. When what does that word uh, lack mean? Well, First of all, we have to be clear that it's not talking about any man uh, all without distinct, all without exception. It's talking about any Christian man. What verse is that? That's, uh, wait, I'm in Galatians. I'm not going to find it there. It's in James. What verse is it? If any of you lack uh, wisdom, mm -hmm. oh, no. any lack, uh, he's, no, he said, no, if any man lack faith, I'm thinking of something, another verse. What verse were you thinking of? Is that the one? Yeah. It says lack wisdom here. What verse are you thinking of, Elizabeth? Yeah, it's the it first does, Thessalonians. It no, 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 no. That's not it. It doesn't show up according to this. Those no. Words in that con, in that. No, you're thinking of any fan, if any man lack wisdom. Uh, let him ask of God, but let him ask in faith. Right. How could you ask of God without faith? Right. Well, you're not going to get it. If you ask anything, wisdom. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So what was your question, Elizabeth? Okay, well, we're all, the disciples, one of their prayers was, Lord, increase our faith. Which means that they, number one, they all had it. Mm -hmm. And number two, they wanted to have more. They want to grow in their faith. I right. Growing in um, faith and knowledge. So, okay, yeah. But when Jesus, when they were in the boat, and there was a storm. And he said, oh, ye of little faith. Little. They didn't lack faith. Yeah. Yeah, of little faith. But they had faith. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been little. Now, how does that, um, uh, how do you call it, come to, and then how do you come to an understanding of that when the Bible, when the Bible speaks of him giving it, giving liberally, not, and a braid is not? Well, we, one verse is that uh, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Yeah. And then, and then uh, where James 4 says, we, ye have not because ye ask not and you ask to, and you, and you ask and receive not because you ask to, to, to you ask amiss to, uh, uh, you know, on your own lusts. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's asking and asking for the right, what? With the right motive. 
exaltation which we don't Christ. again once again we, we don't do without the Holy Spirit the only motive we have without the Holy Spirit is, is a carnal motive yeah. yeah so everything we do and, believers and, 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 and our, our and our, go get back to prayer which we're going to deal with after word sacraments yeah the next next week I think yeah and that's that uh, why is why does the Bible say the effectual work of the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much because the prayer that God answers is the prayer that God himself has given. Otherwise, you've got two people like you're praying for two different things. The farmer prays for rain and the guy, the guy only going on a picnic, he prays that it's not going to rain. Mm-hmm. But God answers our prayers in Ezekiel 36, 37. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will be inquired. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this another Lord's Day. We thank Thee for Thy Word. We thank Thee for the Catechism and for the opportunity to meditate on the sacraments. And we pray that Thou would cause us to understand more and more clearly so that we might be more and more benefited from them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. I was going to say that I was looking at the word symbolism um, that you were trying to say what, what a word is called semblance. In Spanish is um, simulacro. Simulated, yeah. Simulacro. Okay. Semblance. Something that resembles. Yeah, some, yeah. Uh, put on. What's that? Put on. In, 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 in my own. What's your context of what we've been talking about? The symbolism, because yeah. remember you use uh, the, that the. Oh, the Baptists, yeah. Yeah. They don't. They they don't You're believe there's such a thing as a means of faith. And the 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 the. Yeah, but that's not what she. She's the underlying reason is this: they don't believe there is such a thing as grace. No, she. I think she was thinking of the things. Because you're a Christian, oh, it's just something you did that the other person was fully capable of doing that he didn't. Yeah. So there's no grace. Uh, I, it's all symbolism. That was in the book of Mark. What chapter and verse? 440? Uh, it's the same description of the Bethlehem shepherd. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, you have little faith that one? Oh, oh, how is it that you have no faith? Uh, no faith. Yeah. No faith. Yeah. Well, I can just... Says it? 440. 440. And he said to them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that he was saying, they do. You, you guys don't have any faith. No, no, no. How is it that in this particular circumstance... You're not right. exercising faith. That's what he's saying. Yep. That's what he has to say. What? Analogy of faith. Oh, yeah. They yeah. Could, they couldn't be. Yeah. No. Because you're you you're you're denying you're contradicting scripture. Yep. And you can't you gotta take you take them out of context. Yeah. Why is it, in other words, why is it that you are not exercising faith when at this time be. when you should be, right? And you're not, obviously. And without the grace of God, we wouldn't have been either, right? Okay, good, man. We all need to learn. What is it? Huh? From the work, work. From the work, work. Meaning, meaning what? What, for, what? Here's what it means. I'll tell you what it means. It, it, the, 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 the grace comes out of the working of the work. See? If it's done by a Roman Catholic priest in a Roman Catholic cathedral. See? It comes out of the working itself. They insist on that. They say... When you receive the sacrament, you receive grace. But why do they say that? 
They say that because to keep these people dependent, just like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. They want to keep the black man dependent on them. Right? Yeah. And the Baptist church. So every time every time a white police policeman uh, kills a, a a black guy, they show up. Why? 